Hi, in this video we're going to be uh, using Raypump's paid features. So Raypump is a uh, rendering tool for Blender, specifically with cycles, and we're going to be rendering an animation and looking at um, high quality still photos as well. So this is for the paid features, and if you haven't already seen the tutorial about free features and installing the software itself, please click here right now. So uh, we're going to be using this cartoon guy um, that I found on BlendSwap, and I put him in a simple scene, which you can see here. So if we go to our camera view, it's just he takes a few steps forward, and then he opens this thing. Suzanne pops out, as well as some particles. Um, if we look at it with cycles turned on, you see we have actually quite a bit going on. All these particles are emissive, and uh, the character is moving and there's all sorts of light everywhere and this background is actually animated so we have lots of stuff going on and we're going to be using ray pump to accelerate this and uh, I don't like waiting so so ray pump helps me wait just a little bit less um, so the, we have uh, ray pump running if you don't know how to do this it was in the previous video so uh, just make sure it's connected and we can now try to render this frame so you probably have it set to free currently. And what we're going to, uh, what I've done is a static as well as an animation test. So I'm going to reduce the quality of this so that it'll render during this video. So I'm just going to set it to 100 samples and we'll change it to limited global illumination. Those are two good things to do for test renders. Now if we go down here and select animation and then send to ray pump, it'll send the job and we can check the progress of it here. So it's uploading my model and then it'll begin animating. While it's doing that, I'm going to go over some of the stuff on the website. So let's go here. And we're just going to go down to see what the difference between free and pro is. And just because you're pro doesn't mean you don't also get the free stuff, which is kind of cool. So you can still do your free 10 renders per day, uh, just with limits like 500 samples and resolution and stuff like that. So uh, some of the paid features we're taking advantage of here are the hair and emitter particles um, and Rigify, which our little cartoon guy here uses for the animation to simplify things quite a bit. So it costs uh, about uh, one euro cent, which is one point something uh, US cents uh, per hour on their GPU. Or it's actually a little bit uh, more. It's it's double that per hour. It's currently discounted. Uh, so I made this calculator. So uh, my computer has a 500 watt power supply. So if it's running at full uh, power, I estimate that it uses about 400 watts. And this is the energy price in my area. And when I rendered this myself, it took 47 minutes and some change to do one frame. So I did a 10 frame animation. Uh, test at 500 samples, and it cost me uh, about 50 render points. So for that, at my electric bill, it would cost almost a dollar, and with Ray Pump, it cost uh, 70 cents. So I could just turn my computer off while this is rendering, or continue doing other things instead of just leaving the computer to render for 7.94 hours just to do 10 frames, which is quite quite silly. So instead, Ray Pump would take 30 minutes if it was only using uh, one, one GPU node. Otherwise, it could do two or three at the same time and reduce this quite a bit. But even if it was just using one GPU node, it would uh, be 15 times faster than my computer, which is really nice, especially if you're in a business or something like that, where you need to be able to see your test renders somewhat quickly. So now if we go over to our Ray Pump client, you can see that it's rendering. So we're just going to open our job manager. And this is the animation that I ran. Uh, quite high quality, and it cost about $5 altogether to do uh, 96 frames or 4 seconds at 24 frames per second. So now it's running this, this first uh, animation here. The, each one of these is grouped into 10 frames, so it runs each of them individually. In case there's any sort of uh, problems or anything like that, 
and so it can better schedule things to be run um, with the best performance. It's kind of uh, a neat system. And then at the end of each of these, it just rounds however many render points, and then they all get added up at the end. Also, uh, once one is finished, you can go to your renders and hit download, or press Alt-D. And what that'll do is uh, download all of the images that have finished rendering into uh, the folder. So now that we have those, I'm just going to tell it to download them right now. Otherwise, it would just wait to the end. And we're going to see how these look, and maybe we'll cancel the rest of these if we don't like them. How the, the first few frames look. So it'll take a minute to download all of those. And if we go into our ray pump folder and then click on renders, it'll create a new folder at the end of the list. And you see that it's just downloading all of these. My internet connection isn't great, so that's why it's taking quite a while to do this. And when it's done, I should have however many frames it's completed. So it also appears to be downloading some from this currently running uh, set. Oh no, it's just downloading to frame 20. So it, it finished the, the 1 to 10, and then 11 to 20 I've also finished. Oh, and now it's finished 21 to 31. So I'm just going to uh, go into Blender. And I've created a new scene, which I have here, and I'm just calling it VSE. Now, if I go into my uh, visual scene editor, I can just uh, put this back to the start of the clip by pressing shift left and then hitting shift A to add an image. Now it says image, but what we're actually adding is um, an image sequence. So just drag a little uh, box to select all of these and hit add image strip. Now you see it's added to the beginning and this is how we get these PNGs to show up in our editor. So you can see now that we have the first few frames. Now if we go back into our ray pump, we can just hit download again and it'll make sure that we have all of the files that it's completed. So it's just checking these. These won't take the full amount of time, just a second or so. And it'll download the next set of frames, which at the moment it has completed 40 frames. Now, I did lower the quality quite a bit, so these would probably only take uh, my computer about 10 minutes per frame. But as you can see, uh, all of these here, frames 1 through 40, have completed in just a few minutes, which is really nice. And I could, instead of talking about Ray Pump, be in Blender doing other changes, maybe making a new asset for the scene that I needed. I was just checking to see if my character was walking okay, which he's not. Um, and I could be doing something in Blender instead of waiting for all this to happen. And I could be in, say, the default view doing all that. So this pops up if you left it open whenever a new batch is done. We're just going to let this close. And it looks like we have 40 frames now. So I believe what we can do is just select this clip by right-clicking it, scroll down in the sidebar, and select a folder uh, with this icon here. Oh, no, that doesn't seem to work. So we're going to just delete this and add it again. It's not too much trouble. Image, and it's in the same folder as we last used it from. Add image strip. Move this back to the start. And now we have 40 frames to look at while the rest are running. And I have some sound effects in here as well. So uh, this is one way, instead of just rendering straight out to a movie file, this way we can uh, we can have our frames as they're rendering. And also, say we didn't like frames 30 through 50. We could then just add separate image sequences. So we, instead of re-rendering the entire project, we would just have to render those 10 or 20 frames. So now this is just going to finish up. And I already have the whole thing rendered previously. So I'm just going to close that, go back to the start, add the entire sequence that I complete, completed here. And we're just going to export it into a movie file. So uh, open up Properties panel, which I believe is Shift F something. 
Shift F7 while hovering over this area. And you're going to want to change your dimensions to the dimensions of your video and the output to AVI JPEG. Now I'm just saving this to my desktop. And then because we created a new scene, we can just hit animation to render it. And it's just going to encode all of these frames into a video file along with any sounds or anything else we've included. And that'll appear on the desktop in just a second. So here we have our movie file. And that's all there is to it. So that's how you could work with animations in Raybump. Thank you, and I will see you in future videos.